I mean, it's a brilliant blooming job. Absolutely brilliant. Spent every holiday, probably from about the age of nine or ten, at an uncle's farm in the Manawatu. And so as a result of that, I only had one ambition on leaving my schooling years behind me was to be a farmer. Dad's uh, advice was to do something other than that because he said, I can't ever see the day that I can assist you in getting a farm. So anyway, three years on, uh, having worked as a farm worker, mostly in the Manawatu, gave that away and joined a stock firm as a stock clerk and then ultimately went to the inevitable, the Mark III Zephyr, the old green slouch hat and uh, was based in the Hunterbull area. And it was during that period where I was approached by a good mate of mine and colleague, Colin Follis, who had also been in uh, the stock firm and had somehow or another called himself into this job as a rural broadcaster for the old NZBC. So there I was at the Fielding Sale Yards and he said, Tall, you got a minute? Yep. Clambered up onto the rail, he said, you want a job? Doing what? How about being an assistant rural broadcaster? Oh, sounds easier than what I'm doing right now. Did an audition, passed the audition, da-da, just like that. I always have felt the role of a producer is to give as much encouragement and support to the people that you're working to. And if the budget goes a bit over, well, what the hell? If it's a bit under, well, I don't damn well care. Are we turning out a good product? So this job has allowed me to I never see myself as creative, but I suppose allow my creative juices to find an outlet. It's had an opportunity to travel the length and breadth of New Zealand and a hell of a lot of countries overseas as well. Uh, made an enormous number of friends and contacts and have helped, I hope, establish something about the farming industry in New Zealand with the, with the common man. I mean, if you go back to the earlier days, everybody had a an uncle or a brother or someone directly associated with the land. Whereas now our country Canada is about the only, uh, I suppose, front window for farming. Well, if you think back to those very, very early days of television and nobody knew anything about it, and this guy happened to wander off the street, an Italian guy, and he said, duh, I know everything about the television. And so he became a director instantly. Well, he must know something, he's foreign. But he did have a brief sojourn with Country Canada, and two fabled stories have come out about him. One was that uh, he asked Godfrey Bowen, who was a famous shearer who developed the shearing technique, and he allegedly was on location there, and he said, uh, Look, uh, Godfrey, I don't like uh, your bum. It's in a shot. I want you to share with your left hand. So that was one supposedly urban myth that has risen about this guy. And then there was another guy who was a very gentleman farmer. He was a stud ram breeder and beautifully spoken, a very nice man. Uh, but Romano allegedly said to this man, take your tie off, man. You don't look like a man on the land. Uh, he was outrageous, but there were quite a few in those early days too, who were almost as bad. If you think about the spoofs on Country Canada, it actually predates television and goes back to the days of the rural broadcasters. They were radio spoofs, if you like. So the guy from the macaroni grower, da 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 and he was over there with the second echelon in Italy and he saw the macaroni vines growing and he thought that would fly into New Zealand. So that was where it began. When we got into television and Country Canada, um, the major influence on those was Burton Silver. Burton just had a lovely loose contact with TV in many directions, but he also had a particular rapport with Tony Trotter. And as it went on, he was the one who came up with, which I think was one of the most successful, was the fence player, of course. That's been emulated so many times. But I think of all the spoofs that I was associated with, was with the radio control dog. And again, one of Burton's brilliant ideas very cleverly shot uh, in such a murky manner as though it was in, the, in a surgery and, and that sort of stuff. And it was so ridiculous when you think about it, but it was so, also so credible because Burton Silver actually appeared in that show. He was the scientist. I took over the role of producer, not only of Country Canada, but of rural programs, so uh, Dog Show came into it as well. 
What attracted it, to a large extent, it was Johnny Gordon's commentary. Because he, he was able to set up the sheep with the enemy and the dogs with the good guys. And then there was the bloke there as well. Oh, yes, this is the man who runs them too. And of course, there was enormous amount of tension. Will they get in there? Will he get them through those markers? Can he get them in the pen? It's only eight seconds. Can he do it? And all this sort of wonderful stuff. Yes or no? And the sheep would be scattering. And it got a huge audience. And then a certain programmer pulled it. It was rating its socks off. And I will never forgive that lady, much and all as we've discussed it since. I'll, I think that was one of the worst decisions ever made in programming in New Zealand. I don't say it would still be going on now, 45 years on, but they had no reason to pull it, I could see. In those earlier days, though, we weren't as hung up about ratings. We didn't, you know, as long as it was a good show, and uh, as long as it was vaguely within budget, then yeah, let's go, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah, the likes of, we had a wonderful bloody programmer in Des Monaghan, who never actually came in and said, this is costing the earth, what are you doing? He just said, is it a good idea? Yep. What's the budget like? Yep. Uh, let's do it. That was all there was to it. I got the shock of my life that John Knowles wanted me to front the news. And I thought, well, I've never done that sort of thing. I've stood in the paddock and, and done bits down the barrel, but that's about the limit to it. But I did get a very scathing review from the TV critic on the, the Christchurch uh, newspaper at the time. Tawley stares at the camera, though I know he is new, he stares at the camera like a startled rabbit waiting to be eaten. And it was, oh, I remember reading that on the plane flying up to Auckland. And I thought, oh, that's so cruel. But it was also so true. Because I don't give a damn what anybody says. News reading is a skill. If you spoke too fast, you'd be staring at the camera, waiting for the jolly director to cut to the item. But they wouldn't do that unless, of course, you had that timing exactly right. So Bill McCarthy was the absolute brilliant guy. They reckon one of his party tricks was speak for eight seconds. And he could speak for eight seconds to almost to the frame. So that was another part of the skill. Was it, a, was it enjoyable? Yes, it was. Ah. Uh, I was a very big fish in a little pond, you know, everybody knew you in Christchurch, off the street, not in New Street. But, hey, it's all fun. One of the programmes that I was rather proud of was a programme called Here to Maternity. And we just went down to the local hut hospital here, were allowed to join a, uh, a prenatal class, and uh, we just followed them through, we selected the half a dozen and did a, an actuality, even allow some of three of the, the women, even allowed us into the, into the uh, birthing theatre and, and actually watch the, the whole procedure. The only thing I insisted on with the directors was, that's fine, but we shoot from the navel up. I don't want to see anything of the other. Thank you very much. Been there, done that. Bought the T-shirt. And it was, I thought, a very nice series, but it was buried at a time slot uh, which didn't attract a big audience, but still a hell of a lot of fun. Am I going to retire? I've got to admit, it's getting nearer the time when I hung up my spurs. I've been toying with it now for the last five years. Uh, TVNZ, would, I would like to think, have been particularly benign. They must know that I'm getting nearer my three score years and ten. And so, yeah, I, I'm working on the series. I'm now a consulting producer. So I'm getting more, shifted more and more to the left or right or whatever you like to put it. But at least I'm there. Uh, I've been allocated more stories for this year. But you are the first to hear it. But I, I have made up my mind and reconciled myself to that this will probably be my last year. And it'll be with a huge amount of regret that I do hang up my spurs. Because man, what a life I've had.